This video was brought to you by Stoneberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Oh, what's up? As Bjorn request, here I am at the Quick Charge station. So, we're gonna test this charger. Let's see how we go. screen in the car. I'm sorry about the quality. I'm not a professional like Dion. Okay, we might have to wait for a little bit. There it is. Charging. Okay, it is working. Nice. Shade. All right, that's it from me today. Bye, guys. Yo, what's up? I hope you guys liked that intro. Uh, that was shot today by May, which is Amber's sister. She's still in uh, Chiang Mai, uh, and uh, that was uh, MacGyver, my Tesla Model Three in Thailand. And you, what you guys saw, there was not plug and charge. It's actually called auto charge. And there's a difference between auto charge and plug and charge. So uh, there will be a link in the description below to download uh, the PDF I'm going to show you guys. So uh, I will use this one as like a template for talking a little bit about uh, what the heck is auto charge and so on. So I don't know too much about this. I haven't read. I read the document a little bit, but I'm going to show now. But before we start, I need to go to the end, and we have to give credit to. Uh, Dr. Ing Andreas Heinrich from Daimler and Ronald uh, Heather got from Carmack. So they were the one uh, writing this document. And um, uh, so it's it's all about the, the I, I learned about something ISO 15118 plug and charge and also auto charge or auto charge. Uh, all the Germans, they'd be auto charge, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, this is a very interesting uh, document if you want to know more about uh, the whole thing here. So uh, there is a bit of uh, aberration what it means. And then, uh, so here they talk about auto charge that, you know, it's uh, it's a way of uh, start, starting charging based on uh, on uh, the car's identifier. And uh, when you saw me plug it in, uh, the car, uh, the charger communicated with the car. And then the, the, the initial thought that many people thought, okay, but it just sends the VIN, no, the VIN, right? Technically it's not VIN number, because VIN is vehicle identification number, but it's, it sends the VIN, right? Turns out that's also what I thought, it sends the VIN. Actually, it's not VIN. It's um, it's actually MAC address on the, on the car versus uh, the charger. Um, so let me see. Uh, here in this document here, you can see that yeah, yeah here it it's mentioned here an auto charge that it sends the MAC address and that's how the charger identifies it. And I was like, huh? So I I talked to a few people. And it turns out, okay, so even the old uh, tritium, uh, no, no, sorry, the old ABB charger, 50 kilowatt, can work. I said, yes, it actually works, but only on the CCS port. <laughs> so the Chadamo plug, as far as I know, doesn't have this communication. So that's another advantage of using CCS. Um, and then, okay, uh, they talk about this and uh, they try to explain what uh, what happens that the, the, uh, they send the MAC orders and then uh, there's uh, the, is the OCCP, uh, the, the open open charge point protocol and they communicate and this only as opposed to this only applies to cars that are a little bit newer EVs for example I think if you try to do this with an old e-golf or maybe the e up then it won't work but at least for the Tesla it does work and I guess most modern EVs it works and then I maybe actually maybe even for Millennium Falcon because Millennium Falcon has pretty uh, sophisticated uh, hardware and software and you can always update the car so it will work even with Millennium Falcon uh, uh, but okay, so anyway, uh, moving on, so you see here they explain a little bit about what's going on and so on. You can read about this, uh, very interesting read. Uh um, and also, uh, so here they also list what the, what the benefits of auto charge is, uh, because it, it, I mean, you're not gonna lie, you guys saw how simple it was. Uh, May didn't have to dig around with, well, actually, maybe that's a wrong, um, wrong choice of words, but she didn't have to mess around with uh, with app or scan QR code or use any RFID. It was just plug and charge or 
auto charge. Uh, so really user friendly. Um, but of course there are some security issues with it, which means that you can manipulate the MAC address. You can change something there, uh, spoof the MAC address uh, so that you can basically charge for free. But then you kind of need to know which, which uh, card to spoof, right? Uh, and so on. But at least um, also what they talk about here, what did they mention it here? Um, okay, maybe they, they mentioned it, but uh, um, you know the problem actually with today's RFID is that um, when you, uh, uh, there's actually been recently been uh, in the news, uh, but I, I knew about this for a long time and I didn't mention it, but it's quite easy to, to copy on RFID. And then once you copy the RFID, then you can just uh, abuse it. Now let me show you, by the way, uh, what I talk about. So very commonly when you have, yeah, for example, this is, this is getting pretty old, but we ha I have Fortum Charge and Drive RFID. I've been using this, well, it used to be Fortum, now it's Recharge, but it's quite simple. You just beep, you just beep in on the charger and then it starts charging, very convenient. Well, but it's also very easy to copy this. Uh, and then you can just, uh, th then someone else can then be charging on my account and I wouldn't know because I'm all over the place, right? So that's the, that's a vulnerability and actually you don't even have to be that close. You, I think you, if you have the right equipment, you can copy this one from half a meter away. So I wouldn't even know I was being copied, right? So, um, uh, so that's the, the problem with RFID, but it's very convenient. And think about this, we, we have RFID in, 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 throughout Europe roughly. We use RFID, uh, everyone in the mothers uses RFID and except for the noobs, they just dig around with app. Right, uh, but in Thailand they actually don't use it that much. They just tend to scan the QR code, and the and the problem with that solution is that that the the charger needs to be online because the RFID will actually be saved in the whitelist locally on the on the charger. And I don't know if you guys know, but every charger uh, has a 3D 4G uh, 3 3G 4G uh, communication. It has a SIM card, uh, so um, so in case. If the charger is offline, then uh, it won't be able to, of course, communicate via the app, and then you won't be able to charge unless you have the the RFID local in the whitelist. So the RFID has an advantage there, actually. Uh, but supposedly, also, if you use uh, auto charge, the auto charge MAC address uh, will also be saved locally on the whitelist. And then, uh, so then it will go qu quite fast. You don't have to communicate to the back end and then come back again and say, okay, this guy's approved, we can start charging. Uh, so, you know, what I'm saying is that the auto charge has great benefits because it makes it super easy to charge uh, versus having to use RFID or app. And it has weaknesses, but so does also today's uh, RFID system have but it's just that i guess most people they don't uh, they don't consider it a big abuse if someone uh, well i guess a fat e-tron could be charging on my account and uh, yeah then, then they'll be saving lots of money right but okay so anyway um, um but okay i should also mention by the way um uh, that auto charge uh, has its benefits but also its limitations because uh, i didn't understand all of this i think you guys need to read and maybe you guys understand more but from what i understood is that um, uh, ISO 15118 uh, uh, with uh, plug and charge is the way to go because with plug and charge you have you have stronger security and uh, so it, it becomes almost well, what much 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 harder to uh, spoof and uh, to fake or or to abuse a system. So, uh, but the plug and charge is supposedly what uh, all the car manufacturers are trying to make work. But then, the from what I heard from a friend. Uh, they they can't agree with uh, stuff you know that's pretty much where it ends the technology is there but the car manufacturers versus the hardware manufacturers uh and the chartboard operators and and they, they, they just can't agree with and then meanwhile the users they are still stuck here with app and rfid or or sms or something yeah but what about auto charge why don't we use auto charge because it seems like auto charge has its benefits 
Um, well, you guys can read all of this. As I, I gave up. I mean, I, I started. Yeah, I, I can. I can saw the the, the brands at the supports auto charge, but uh, I was uh, a little bit surprised why Tesla was not mentioned here. But with Tesla has been using something like plug and charge and auto charge since two, 2012, so they already have a system that works great. Uh, but okay, eventually other car manufacturers will also uh, uh, come after. But um, also, it was mentioned here in the document because some people. Oh, but you know, you know. Uh, yeah, I know. They're here, here. Fastnet. Fastnet and EVgo, they also have this and they use auto charge, so it's not plug and charge. I was like, oh, okay. So, um, so there's a difference between them, but uh, yeah, now you guys have seen it. Um, I, I don't know too much about this, but uh, from, from a user perspective, I love this shit. So, uh, w when I read the document here, they, they described that what you can do is that uh, if the Okay, either way, you have to be registered in some system, right? Uh, I'm not sure how, but uh, okay, as for now, you have to be registered in some kind of app, for example, plug surfing or recharge or something out there. Uh, but once you're registered there as a user, once you go to one of those chargers and you plug in the car, you don't have to know the VIN even, because then the car will send the MAC address to the, to the charger, and then the charger will try to recognize the Mac. If it recognizes the Mac address, it will say, okay, welcome. And then it starts charging. But if it doesn't recognize it, uh, the first thing the user needs to do, we have to implement this in the app, is that the user needs to verify something on the app. Like, okay, we, you have a new car here. Uh, you want to add it to your uh, account and then maybe give it a nickname. And then uh, maybe you have to verify, okay, we want to enable this car for, for auto charge. And then from there, and then next time you plug it in, it will also, uh, the, system, the whole system will recognize everything and then the automatic charging will work. That's the way I understand can be implemented. And I still don't understand why we're not doing it today. Why we are still struggling with uh, RFID and clumsy apps and stuff. Uh, well, I. I I don't know, man, but uh, for some reason, uh, auto charge or plug in charge is not very common nowadays. I, I get the feeling that auto charge is easier to implement. I mean, even uh, PA Volta implemented and, and uh, uh, was again, and Fastnet and EVgo, they already have it up and running. Whereas for most other car, uh, charge point operators, they still don't use auto charge. So why? Because it, would, it will make everything so much easier. You will have something similar to Tesla user experience where you just plug it in and that's it. So, uh, and I, I think even, okay, if, if, you, if anyone would abuse this, uh, first of all, you have to spoof a MAC address on the car, uh, which is a little bit harder than copying an RFID. Uh, and then how, how, what, what is the potential of uh, getting fraud anyway? Well, you're talking about uh, in Norway, a couple of hundred nook. Uh, maybe you can set up uh, the app to notify you every time you uh, use auto charge. And then of course, uh, if you <laughs> don't drive and then you suddenly notice that, hey, there's some auto charge is going on here. What the heck is going on? And then you can, of course, uh, take, we can take care that but think about this RFID works today and there hasn't been any big uh, problems of people copying RFIDs and charging on other people's expense so I think auto charge should work for now we need something simpler so that we can easier transition to EVs and then in, eventually we can transition to uh, plug and charge which is uh, stronger and more secure but uh, I don't know about you guys think but I like this shit, and it was very nice to see the demonstration of uh, plug-in I mean, of auto charge in Thailand that it works over there. So if hopefully they can make it more common over there, they had to do some stuff in the background. Uh, PA they had to actually do it manually because they are still in the testing phase over there. But eventually this should be more automated, like I mentioned. The way they can you have to just program the app to be able to do this, and it, it should work. I don't know about you guys, but this is really I. I I like it. Do you guys like it? Should we have it? Come on, we, we, we are the users here. We have to push uh, car manufacturers and uh, charge point operators uh, or uh, charging networks, uh, in other words, uh, to try to implement this because it will make everything so much better. But of course, the, the ultimate step is to um, maybe make this uh, more, like, um, uh, more like gas stations where you just tap, yeah, you just tap uh, with a card and then you charge, something like that. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.